Hey everyone, how's it going? Got another monthly update for all of you. Very exciting video. I'm going to be going over a couple new coins that I've found, which I haven't really mentioned anywhere, uh, that I'm looking to accumulate into the future. So yeah, when I go over these, you guys can add it to your watch list, keep an eye on these. And yeah, basically I'm filming this video from Denver. It's freezing fucking cold here as to why I've got the jacket and stuff. My face is like frozen, so you have to bear with me, uh, you know, you know, talking and stuff. But anyway, we've got four different topics I want to cover in the monthly update. We've got the GPTC outflows versus inflows, couple new coins, where I see the bull run going from here. And I want to give you an update on some airdrop farming stuff that you guys might be interested in. So to start off, let's talk about GBTC outflows versus ETF inflows. Okay. So ever since this ETF got approved a, a few weeks ago, there has been a battle between people selling GBTC to get out of Bitcoin and people buying the ETFs to get into Bitcoin, right? Sellers and buyers, it's been a battle. You can see the battle here with, um, this is showing you the discount or premium between the Bitcoin and GBTC price, because keep in mind, GBTC is a TradFi instrument allowing you to get exposure to Bitcoin, you know, price movement. Um, you're not actually owning real Bitcoin, you're buying a, you know, a, like a derivative almost, I guess you could call it. Um, well, I guess it's just basically just a form of a investment fund, right? And you can see here, this is the amount of on-chain holdings of actual Bitcoin of GBTC. And you can see that over here, the amount of Bitcoin that GBTC Grayscale has been holding has dropped a lot, okay? They've dropped about 150,000 Bitcoin, I think it is. That has been sold onto the market in the past, you know, few weeks. That's billions of dollars, I think in, I don't know exactly how much, but it's a lot of selling pressure from people looking to get out of GBTC. Because you can see here that ever since 2021, the GBTC price has been less than the Bitcoin price, meaning that everyone who bought it is now, you know, they're losing more and more money because they can't sell the GBTC for the, the Bitcoin price. But now it's back at zero, meaning that it's back at parity. It's back at, you know, one GBTC equals one BTC. And because it's taken all this time to go back to parity, there's a so many people who've bought, you know, this, this is a $34 billion fund, I think, around that. There's so many people who bought GBTC who now can get out at break even, at least on the discount versus premium side. And you have to ask yourself, why would you hold GBTC over another ETF that won't have the problem of going into a discount, right? So that's what people have been doing. They've been selling GBTC to go into other ETFs or just to even just get out of Bitcoin altogether. So that's the sell side, right? Now let's look at the buy side. 1 billion or more of inflows has come in since the ETF launch a few weeks ago. And that's been while, you know, crypto has gone down or hasn't really done anything, right? People are buying Bitcoin even though the market hasn't done anything, which is a very promising sign for what might happen if the market does go up into the future. So we've got all this outflow and all this inflow. And you can see here that 94% of GBTC outflows were absorbed by inflows into other ETFs. Net ETF flow since launch is currently minus 7.3k BTC. So even with all this selling pressure of billions of dollars, the ETFs have managed to uh, absorb most of it, like 94% of it, okay? Now, GBTC is a temporary selling pressure and the ETFs are a permanent buying pressure because of how the instrument works. People are adding more and more money over time. It's a, per it's a perpetual permanent passive bid on crypto the triple p permanent perpetual passive that's like all these other etf funds the stock market in general it's just constantly people putting in money into their fucking savings 401ks retirement accounts more and more and now they can put it into bitcoin with the same lump of sum alloc the same pool of money that they are not looking to do anything till retirement they're adding some bitcoin to that okay so you can expect that the etfs the size of the assets on the management is going to go up and up and up and you can see in this one here, uh, the ETFs own 3% of all Bitcoins. Now, what do I mean by this? When you buy one ETF Bitcoin, that ETF fund has to also buy one real Bitcoin, okay? There's obviously no answer to this, but that's the basic premise. So TradFi now technically owns 3% of all Bitcoins. That's essentially what it's saying. The TradFi world owns 3% of all the Bitcoins. You know, in it, obviously there's lacking nuance and there's more to the story, but that's sort of the, the general premise. And in my opinion, this is bullish from a price perspective, not necessarily a tech or, you know, like whatever way you want to look at Bitcoin, but from a price perspective, 
looking at supply and demand. That's 3% of Bitcoins held in the hands of people who have a very high time frame preference for you know how they want to hold their crypto, right? You put money, your ETF money is money that you don't buy and sell all the time. It's just you put it in, you keep it there, you keep adding to it, you keep adding more and more and more, and it creates this just permanent passive Ponzi bid of price just going higher forever. The assets under management just going higher forever. And as well, we, the, all these funds just got approved to begin doing ads about crypto. So now we have the biggest firms in the world launching these funds, telling all their, their clients to invest. And they're also going to be running ads to acquire new people to buy into their funds to get exposure to Bitcoin. When they get exposure to Bitcoin, they ha these funds have to buy Bitcoin off the market or somewhere. They have to buy it from somewhere. And obviously, you know, all this money leaving um, GBTC going into these other ETFs allows for these ETFs to easily buy tons of Bitcoin because there's a lot of Bitcoin trying to be sold by, by Grayscale, GBTC. Now, as I said, Grayscale is a temporary sell pressure and ETFs are a permanent buy pressure. And eventually you're going to run out of Grayscale selling and the ETF buying is going to overpower it. And people are going to also stop being afraid of the GBTC selling and they're going to look more at the buying. And that's going to re-kick off the next step of the bull run where we go to new highs. Okay, that's what it's, in my opinion, is going to look like. Now let's make sure I covered all of this. As well as that, we've got the global liquidity index. Okay, I'm not sure exactly what it's measuring, but the basic premise of this is that as more liquidity is pumped into the into the into these different economies around the globe, the more money that is circulating, the more the higher you know the inflation is going to be. The more money that is going into assets, the higher asset prices are going to go. You know, as more money is being printed, it helps kickstart the economy more spending, more investing, more, 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 things go up, okay? And this this has been a gen, it's not exactly accurate, but you can see like as a general cycle of what asset prices are doing over time, it, it is to a degree driven by the global liquidity index. And you, can, and you can see we bottomed out here and now we're just going up, which is supporting the idea for a, a continued bull run, you know, not immediately, but, you know, 2024, 2025 looks, looks decent. Now, as well, Don Alt, really good uh, trader here, but he's also got some really good takes on investing. I just wanted to include this because it's also sort of in confluence with what I'm saying. Bitcoin has barely dropped after it had to absorb billions of dollars, I think billions, of sell pressure from GPTC, right? So that's a very good indicator of strength, right? In markets, one of the things you want to look for is if if the news is getting worse and price is not dropping, that's a bottom. If the news is getting better, but price isn't going up, that's a top. That's like the general sort of idea of this. And, you know, if all this selling pressure is happening and the price doesn't go down, it's a sign that, you know, the worst case scenario is currently happening. Billions is being sold and price doesn't drop. If this can't make price go down, what will? If this can't make price go up, what will? will that's the question you got to ask yourself at bottoms and tops when you see the market not responding to things that would have in any other time been positive or bearish based on what the news is okay so that's basically what donald is trying to say here now let's talk about um now that we got the etf stuff out of the way let's talk about some new coins that i'm looking at so coin number one is a coin called uh thank you base god tybg okay it's a meme coin that was launched recently on the base chain and i like what i see so far again it's early days i want to see that this coin survives and it just doesn't just rug and you know the community doesn't care i want to see that there's actually you know as price falls fundamentals getting better right that's how you buy a coin when the fundamentals are getting better and the price has been going down because eventually the price will have to reflect the fundamentals now fundamentals doesn't mean oh the tvl of the chain went up or Oh, you know, there's more, you like, there's, like, there's more, um, you know, like, just random things that aren't necessarily going to impact price. It's more like, is the community still really strong, even though the price has gone down? Is there more holders of the token coming in? Is the team still building, right? These, these are some more, like, relevant things that I would say you want to look for when determining, is the fundamentals going up while the price is going down? And... Why do I like this coin? Well, let's talk about this. If you, if you go on their Twitter account, you're going to see they have some really fire memes. 
Um, I think a few of them, are, it's a little bit too spicy, I think some of them for like a, a video like this, but the memes are pretty funny. Um, we'll get into, maybe I'll show you some later. The community, it has its own law, so they have their own way of speaking. It's really weird. It's, a, it's really culty, but I mean, weird and culty is like perfect for crypto. The founders are very, they're very smart people. I can tell the, the type of content they're putting out is very smart. I can tell, you know, these are smart people. I view also another thing. So what is base God? So base God is basically, uh, I'll show you the Twitter. Okay, fine. I'll show you the Twitter. Base God is uh, a coin created. All right, let me see if I can find it. Here we are. Boom. So obviously the founder of Coinbase is Brian Armstrong. Coinbase built base. Everyone worships Brian Armstrong. He's like a cult figure. He's like the only remaining big guy in crypto who hasn't lost their reputation completely. Like CZ Binance, like, you know, the whole thing went on there. Um, Sam Friedman, Fried Bankman, whatever his name is, with FTX, fucking down the drain. A lot of these big players, you know, you know, Vitalik Buterin, what is he doing? You know, people don't really worship him anymore him anymore but now this is like the next pe guy that people are going to worship this bull run they made a coin about him so what i view this as is that the, the token is a derivative of how much people believe that brian armstrong is like their god so imagine base is having a massive alt season when you know normies come back everyone's going to look up to you know brian armstrong the founder the top of the food chain and what is the best bet that they can make on people liking Brian Armstrong. Well, it makes sense that it's it's this token, right? Now, obviously, there could be other competitor ones where it's like other, you know, like ones about Brian. But the community here, you know, they've really cemented themselves as the number one so far. Now, as well as this, there's quite a few of the base team that are holding the token and they love the project. So you can see over here, Jesse, who is the... Um, he's a base contributor. I don't know what that means, but he's pretty high level in base. He has one... Uh, this guy has one, and I don't know who these people are, okay? But they're basically base team, okay? And as well as this, you know, it was a, it was a pretty organic, fair launch, zero mint fee, zero creator earnings, zero token tax, um, all the good things you want to see for a, a fair launch project, okay? And that's one of the points they make here, fair initial launch. And also, uh, so what you need to understand is that I've got a lot of information about base that I can't share because it's a little bit secretive, and private but just so you understand how this whole base thing works is that base is a layer two that coinbase is going to funnel all their users to and coinbase and the base team and everyone is trying to incentivize projects to come over and build and the projects which get listed on coinbase that get grants that get social support are the ones who basically do what base wants them to do right base has a, a number of guidelines that they want met do this do that do that and the projects which best fit this get rewarded and how this project is approaching building and everything is basically just exactly what base wants which is good in terms of if you want them to get a coinbase listing in the future if you want them to get support on social media blah blah and you can see this in action um so there was this tweet by base god and it was actually retweeted by jesse polak it's only uh, you can't actually see it but he basically retweeted it okay and that's a really good sign because this was a post by Base God. Jesse retweeted it. Um, you can see where I'm sort of going with this. Now, that's uh, just for a heads up. I haven't bought this. I'm not buying this one heavy. Okay. I'm chilling. I'm looking at it. I'm observing. Ideally, from a price perspective, I'd love to see it, you know, survive an 80% drawdown. Like what, what I did with Toshi. I waited. I knew about it at a $30 million market cap. I didn't buy it till two and a half million. So ideally waiting for it to drop down here, then I'd be interested in it or if it forms a base here. I don't know. We'll see. Now, when is another meme coin? This is a Solana one. Basically, the this protocol called Jupiter, it's the number one protocol in Solana, is doing an airdrop soon, very soon. And they launched, before they launched their main token, they launched the meme token and it's called when. And, you know, the reason why I like it is that I, I, I'm not, I haven't bought it yet and I don't know if I will, but first impressions, it has a few promising things that I like. So number one, it was made by the founder of the number one protocol in Solana, which was, you know, the Jupiter protocol. And, you know, if you're looking at like 
beta positions, you want to find something that is related to something you are bullish on. And whichever at, you know, let's say you're bullish on, you know, Coinbase. What's the highest beta exposure to Coinbase? Well, it's Toshi, right? Because the, fun, the users go from Coinbase to base and they buy the meme coins. If you're bullish on Jupiter as a protocol or Solana, what's the highest beta exposure? Well, before it was Bonk, right? That went 100x. But now, you know, if you're bullish on Jupiter, how do you get exposure to that? Well, you could buy the Jupiter token, but is that the highest beta play? No. Do you want to make the most money you can? Maybe yes. Are you okay with more risk? Yes. So then when, based off that sort of initial theory, is uh, something worth looking into if you're bullish on Solana and Jupiter? As well, every single Solana like, like infrastructure protocol or app related you know, coin, any coin basically built on Solana doesn't perform very well. You're better off just holding Solana. The only exception to this so far from what I can see is Bonk, right? So if you're looking for something to bet on the Solana ecosystem, it, it, I think in my opinion, it's best to focus on the meme coins, okay? Whiff went crazy, Bonk went crazy, blah, blah. Another thing is that it's, a, it's, a, it's like a cat coin related project. So, you know, cat branding. GCR has prophesized this guy on Twitter that cat coins are gonna make a return. And you can see that the first ever cat coin to hit a $100 million market cap, I think was Toshi. And that's, you know, an initial sign of what might be to come this bull run, cat coins becoming more popular, which does make sense in my opinion. Another good thing is, is decent tokenomics initially. They airdropped like most of the supply to users of Solana. Uh, another thing is that, you know, th there wasn't even really like a coins given to the, the team, right? Let me show you, uh, where does it say? There is no team allocation or compensation for early contributors. So you can see it's a pretty fair launch, which is always what you, good to see with, you know, finding a project you want to buy. Now let's look at the chart. I think it's at like a $55 million market cap. Yep. Chart doesn't look great. Look, I haven't bought it. Doesn't matter. All I care about is, is my entry good? And do things look like they're going to get better in the future? So I'm waiting. Maybe I'll, I want to see if this one survives, you know, its own 60 to 80% drawdown, right? Can it survive going down to here? What happens when it goes to new lows? Is it just going to disappear? You know, so that's something I want to look for. Again, just to emphasize, not buying these, just telling you to add these to your watch list. And I'm just telling you how I do my initial thinking about, you know, new coins that I'm looking into. This is some of the stuff that I go over. Now, also one thing to add, uh, in this new course that I put out, if you haven't got access, I'll link it in the group that you're watching this from. Um, if you're watching this and you're not in any of my paid communities or you're not in, in any of the groups that I sort of exist in online, you won't be able to get access to this, to this course. But if you're in you know, the Hunter Algos or the Mastermind or whatever, you'll be able to get access to this course and you'll find a link to that. But basically what I wanna say is that the course that I have created goes over the 13 core fundamental characteristics that I look for in projects. And so you can see here, this is a real world application of me doing initial research, finding if I like this coin based off of my research criteria, okay? So we've covered that. Where do I see the bull run going from here? So let's look at the charts now. Let's uh, load up the algo. So we had a buy signal recently. It's, you know, it went off at the bottom. Uh, why have a signals not, oh, oops. So we had some signals recently. You can see here one right at the exact bottom. This one, not so much at the bottom. Uh, we had sell signals and stuff like that. So we're sort of just not really, we're in no man's land right now. We're just going sideways. I think that the trend for this year will be eventually up. What we do between then and when we go up, I don't know. It really depends. We have potentially FTX um, having the funds distributed back to the, the people who held them on FTX. And they might be returning the coins back in their US dollar value, meaning they will have to sell billions of dollars of FTX, you know, the, these coins that these people held, which would, in my opinion, crash the market if that happened. What they might do is they might say, we will send you back your coins that you held. If they do that, that's gonna be way better for price because maybe only 30% of people sell versus, you know, most people might keep the, the crypto that they have, which would be way better for price, right? So if they return FTX holdings in US dollars, that's probably four times more selling pressure than if they return it in 
in the coins that these people originally held. Okay. So depending on, you know, what happens there, it's really going to dictate price. Like that's why I can't really give you predictions because it really depends. You know, what does FTX decide to do? I don't know. And when that comes out, that'll dictate the price action. What I would say is that um, you should be, you know, 50%, I, I think I put it in the groups, you should have at least 50% of your money in on this signal here, or this one, I can't remember. And, you know, if you got, you know, have some cash on the side in case we go lower. Um, yeah, I think, again, this year is going to be good for crypto. Maybe we have a extended accumulation range, right? Maybe we have to just go sideways for a bit longer, right? This chart isn't necessarily amazing. We're still, you know, above this kilo here. So we are in a sideways range. You know, it's technically not a terrible chart. So we'll see what happens. But, um, but yeah, I'm bullish on this year, okay? And again, if you look at the total crypto market cap chart, you can see that we've broken a very key level. Last time we did that, Price went up, sideways, and then it went ballistic. Price has gone up, sideways, and maybe because you, you can see the clear demand from ETFs, maybe once Bitcoin goes to a new high, the inflows get serious. Because if we have 1 billion of money come in in ETFs when price was shit, how many billions do we get when price is good? Because remember, most people only want to buy things after things have gone up. My business, my, bus my businesses in crypto have all gone two, three X in terms of volume as the bull market started, right? People love getting into things when it has proven to them right in this moment that it's worth getting into, right? People love buying tops. They love getting out of crypto in the bear markets. Same thing for TradFi. When they see that crypto is in a bull run, that's not gonna, that, they're not going to say, oh, it's overvalued. They're going to say, oh, shit, I need to hop on this trend. And that's where, in my opinion, you're going to get more inflows because... Every single market participant chases price. And, you know, it's only this very few small percent of people who are smart who would be able to buy when the market's shit, right? And that's the people that have bought right now, the billion <laughs> that have bought, right? These people are smarter. They're looking to buy even if price is shit. They are willing to buy just because BlackRock said to buy. But imagine if BlackRock says to buy and it's clearly in a bull market. That's when things go crazy. Now, also something else to consider is that the SPX is at all-time highs. The SBX, you know, we, we sometimes correlated, a lot of the time we're not. Um, it has been, at least so far, a leading indicator of where price is going. The SBX rallied first here, and then crypto caught up to this part, and crypto hasn't really caught up to the second part. You know, my opinion is that the stock market being in, you know, new all-time highs is a good sign for people's risk sentiment in markets. Maybe this is a top, at least temporarily, but... It's a good sign that, you know, we're hitting new, new highs. It shows that people are, you know, willing to pay a, a price for the SBX that it has never been in history. They wouldn't do that if they were bearish, okay? Now, last point I want to cover is that uh, airdrop farming. So in case you weren't aware, I run a automated airdrop farming SaaS, I guess you could call it. If you want to make money from the biggest airdrops in crypto, you can do it through Farmbase. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because I'm going to be adding a new airdrop farming um, sort of protocol soon, I'm going to be adding Solana. So Solana is like at the moment, the it's the main place to make money from airdrops. I think they gave away $200 million or more to people that used Jito. And Jupiter is about to launch their token soon. And they're going to do an airdrop. It's already at a $6 billion FDV. Now, if they give away even, let's say, let's say they give away, it has a, let's say a $900 million market cap, let's say they give away 10%. That's already $90 million that they're going to give away. Okay, and you get access, and there's also multiple airdrop rounds, and there's other protocols on Solana. So we're going to be launching this soon so that you can get automated access to any of these airdrops that uh, we're going to be farming on Solana. Also, we, there's other airdrops, so for example, Base. I talk a lot about base. It's the protocol that I have the most insider information on, the most alpha on. Linear, you can also farm. That's going to be big as well. Scroll, that one should be big. And yeah, you basically just, you can make a free wallet. It doesn't cost you any money. You just deposit some money and then we split the airdrop, right? It takes you about five, 10 minutes to set a wallet up. There's a tutorial here that I filmed to show you exactly how to do it. Um, you know, pretty simple video. FAQ, there's a community you can join to ask any questions. And if you refer your friends, you can get referral fee. So just wanted to mention this because 
we're adding Solana soon and I really highly recommend if you guys want to just farm airdrops automatically, you can do it through my website here. The reason that you'd use this one over any of the others is that all these other airdrop farming services, you don't know who they're run by. Anonymous teams, they could rug you, they could take your money. At least you know this one's run by me and I have an incentive alignment to do what is best for you because I run a personal brand, right? This is this is a tiny thing that I run. This doesn't really make me much money. So it doesn't really make sense that I, you know, the incentive alignment is just really good here compared to, you know, a lot of these other competitors on the market. So that's everything for this video. Let me just give a 20 second summary. I think the outflows is gonna decrease and the inflows will increase and it'll eventually make price go up. Two new meme coins, not buying, but just keeping an eye on them. You can add them to your watch list as well. One from base, one from Solana. I think 2024 is a good year. I think ETF inflows increase as price goes up because everyone loves chasing price. And you can do airdrop farming automatically through my site, farmbase.pro. We're gonna be adding Solana very soon, probably in a week or so. All right, guys, thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Cheers.